Week two of the NFL season, it is underway. We had Thursday Night Football last night, recording this on a Friday morning, and now we're looking forward to the main slate on Sunday, and I'm using all the tools over at Stochastic.com to build out my lineups and show you what it is that I'm getting to as I'm building out my initial set of lineups. So if you guys could do me a favor, like this, if you're watching on YouTube or on Twitter, also follow, subscribe. It is really helpful to me. I appreciate it a whole bunch. Trying to give as much free content as I can. And what does help make that possible is just liking the videos, subscribing, all that good stuff. And if you want to sign up for our NFL package, link is included below and everything is included with our NFL package. You get access to player projections, ownership projections, all the tools we have on the site, and even stuff like our contest generator. Where you could build our you build your lineups out and then the contest simulator so you could simulate those lineups and see which ones are expected to perform the best. So uh, this is for FanDuel. I also have a lineup that I did for, uh, sorry, a lineup video that I also did for DraftKings. So if you guys want to check out the DraftKings version of this, also available on YouTube and on my Twitter. Now let's go ahead and look at the top 150 lineups, have them sorted here by ROI. And overall, number one best projected lineup, it is a Chief stack. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Sky Moore. And I understand people probably don't want to play Sky Moore in week two because it went very poorly in week one. If you guys played the opening Thursday night showdown game, Sky Moore was on the field a bunch and didn't really do anything with it. It ran around the field, wasn't effective. He couldn't get open. We saw Kadarius Tony not able to catch the football. If we're trying to play some sort of narrative here, maybe Travis Kelsey now intro being introduced into the Chiefs offense for the season after he was out for week one. Maybe it just creates more gravity to where the defense has to pay more attention to Travis Kelsey and allows players like Sky Moore to be more open in the passing game. At some point, it stands to reason Mahomes is going to have to throw to somebody who isn't Kelsey. Kelsey's going to soak up a massive target share. He's a tight end that I really want to target as much as possible in week two. And I also think that it stands to reason that we should see somebody who is not Travis Kelsey probably catching balls at some point for the Chiefs this year. If you look at some of the other lineups here, getting to, yeah, a bunch of Chiefs in my top projected lineups, as well as Bengals here, primarily the lineup build that I have for week two, kind of similar to week one. Quarterback with multiple pass catchers is showing up as my most frequently used stacks. And if we go look at exposures, by the way, as far as payout, the uh, number, the uh, the Millie Maker over on FanDuel, so like the biggest tournament they have there, pays out super top heavy. So I have this set to 30% to first to uh, sort the lineups and figure out the payout structures for the ROIs of these lineups. If we're looking at stack exposures, as far as single stacks go, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, and Josh Allen, the three I'm getting to the most frequently, 10.7, 10.7, and 8.7%. No other quarterbacks really showing up in my single stacks. The next most common one was Geno Smith at 3.3%, which is a fairly low lineup allocation. As far as the double stacks, kind of like that we're mostly getting to the studs here at QB. Same deal with the double stacks as the single stacks. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes. So if we look at all the stacked lineups I have, you know, what is this? Like 25% of my lineups have some form of Josh Allen stack. We've got uh, same for Joe Burrow and then a little less than 20% for Patrick Holmes. But still, we're looking at something like two thirds ish or so of my lineups off the top of my head, just doing the math really quickly. It's some sort of Chiefs, Bengals, or Bills stack, which I really like. The top stack store that we have over at FanDuel give these three teams by far the best odds of being the top scoring teams on the slate. And also, all three quarterbacks are coming off somewhat disappointing efforts in week one from a fantasy standpoint. So I think they should be go low, they should be going lower owned in large field tournaments than what we would normally expect from these guys just because of recency bias and how they struggled in week one. If we go and look at some of the individual exposures, by far my most rostered player here, David Montgomery, four fifths of my lineups have David Montgomery and I'm 80.7%. And if we if we read into what the Lions end up doing in the backfield in week one, this is something I wouldn't be surprised if once we get more news and information, we could see David Montgomery's projection go down a little bit on our site and Jameer Gibbs go up. But at least in week one, David Montgomery was playing the bulk of the snaps in the backfield. Jameer Gibbs took a little bit of a backseat to him. As we go forward in the season, I do think it's going to flip where Jameer Gibbs becomes the go-to guy. But at least in the early going of the season, it does seem like they're going to lean a little bit more towards Montgomery. It also stands to reason that Montgomery is going to be the goal line back with more scoring opportunities. Other players that I'm getting to here, uh, lots of Stefan Diggs at wide receiver. Uh, kind of getting to a lot of the Texans defense, which is a little bit surprising. 
and other defense. I'm getting to ca- less surprised than getting to a bunch of the Cowboys defense against the Jets and Zach Wilson, a quarterback now instead of Aaron Rodgers. But uh, yeah, getting to a lot of the Texans defense here as well. As far as tight ends go, getting to Higby and Kelsey as my two most rostered. And then Adam Troutman down here as well. So only three tight ends that I have double-digit exposure to. You got Kelsey, who's going to demand a massive target share. We've got uh, Higby here, who, once again, is somebody who's going to be benefiting from increased targets. Not quite the same as Travis Kelsey, because for Higby, it's with Cooper Cup being out. Travis Kelsey is just because all the other pass catchers on the Chiefs kind of suck right now. So just by default, I expect Mahomes to be throwing a lot to Travis Kelsey. And then Troutman is because Greg Dulich is not expected to play. So with him out, more snaps, more targets going to Troutman. Other position players that we're getting to here, a lot of Christian McCaffrey. I have no issues with that. We were seeing some reports in the offseason that the 49ers might look to be cautious with Christian McCaffrey's workload so that he's fresh for the playoffs. Uh, Well, that went out the window in week one because he's on the field for every single play. So Christian McCaffrey... I think we could confidently play him in week two, especially when you consider that he's a matchup against a Rams team where the 49ers are favored by a touchdown and they figured to be running the ball out in the fourth quarter. Other players here I'm getting to, Chris Godwin, some of James Conner, and even though the Cardinals offense, not great, they do have a decent matchup in week two against the Giants, who's got obliterated by the Cowboys in their first game of the season. Debo Samuel, Jamar Chase here, so going to correlate with the Joe Burrow stacks. If you think about the quarterbacks that I was getting to, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow. We've got three pass catchers here. They're also showing up in a lot of lineups because it correlates with those quarterbacks. So Stefan Diggs, Jamar Chase being two of my most rostered wide receivers, and then Travis Kelsey being my second most rostered tight end correlates with the QBs that we're getting to. See if there are any contrarian players here that I'm getting a good amount of exposure to. Uh, Tutu Atwell. So I think Atwell is a pretty good pivot off of Puka Nakua. If you look at Atwell, he's projected for about half of the ownership of Nakua, and we have them with pretty similar projections. We have Nakua project for half more of a fantasy point, but we're splitting difference here, a very minor one. If Nakua is going to end up being about twice the ownership of Atwell, both of them are good plays, but I I would lean a little bit more towards Atwell relative to ownership if he's going to be this much less popular than Nakua. Players that I'm underweight to the field to here. Uh, Josh Jacobs, Calvin Ridley, Keenan Allen, Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry. Those are the five players who I ended up most underweight to, at least as far as this build is concerned. Of those players, the one I got to the most of was 4% of Derrick Henry. He's projected for 14% ownership. We'll see what ends up happening with DeAndre Hopkins. He hasn't practiced each of the last couple of days at the time that I'm recording. And if there is no DeAndre Hopkins, then the projection is likely going to be going up for Derrick Henry and it'll look like a better play. But at least as of now, I am underweight to him. So that's a little bit of a brief overview of everything that we have to talk about when it comes to the top FanDuel lineups to build for week two. Like I said, I also have a DraftKings lineup, uh, very similar, where I did a DraftKings sim video going up on my Twitter page, also available on YouTube. So go check that out if you guys want DraftKings information. Other than that, like, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. I appreciate it. Good luck with all your lineups in week two, guys. We'll be doing another week three breakdown a week from now.